Working from home with kids. Law firm growth during COVID-19, episode 78. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit-generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Profit with Law. It's another week of uh, social distancing, social isolation, working from home. And what would be better than starting the week with an episode on uh, talking about how to work from home when you've got kids at home? And uh, this was a subject matter that's near and dear to my heart. I've got a four-year-old and a two-year-old here in the house with me. And uh, I mean, I work from home all the time. That's where, you know, home is. But my kids are typically in daycare and in school, and I get to be productive when they're not here. And uh, this is a very different environment, very different situation when they are around. They need to be entertained. Uh, and more than being entertained, we really want to make sure that they're in actually being active and getting fresh air and productive and and not like my my daughter is not so much an issue she's a two-year-old but my son is uh, four and a half and you know he's he's learning things in school he's learning to read his letters and learn his sounds and he's learning all all kinds of skills and uh, we don't want him to regress to be set back to miss out so really trying to figure out how to navigate that. Um, And that's my situation. You know, other people have kids who are in school where they really need to be learning, you know, subject matter, how the school systems are navigating that and then staying on top of them and making sure that they're doing what they need to do. And at the same time, trying to get your work done. So there's a large population of, of my listeners that have kids. And I think that this is going to be a topic that uh, that you enjoy, that you resonate with. And uh, for those of you that do not, uh, certainly you're welcome to listen to this. And also, if you if you already attended the live stream, feel free to uh, just mark this as played on your on your podcast player and come back tomorrow. We're going to release a, a brand new episode that is not one of these um, live stream replays. This is the fourth out of ten the live streams, so we're going to have six more of them coming your way uh, after this as well. Uh, so enjoy, and uh, here is that replay. We are here talking about working from home with kids. Um, we all love our children. We love them so dearly. But at the same time, when you're done with a day in the house with them, um, I think that we try to scheme and plot and figure out ways to make them disappear. So uh, I um, I wanted to, to, uh, to talk about this topic because a lot of people are suddenly forced to be in the situation when they were not set up for it before. Even myself, I work from home normally, uh, but my kids go to daycare. They go to school. Uh, so yeah, they're home, but it's very different. They're, they're not underfoot the entire time. And now my wife is working from home five days a week. She also works from home a few days a week normally, but now she's home every day. I'm home every day. And we've got these two uh, rambunctious monsters who need our attention literally every second of every minute. So figuring that out, uh, we had to figure it out pretty quickly. And, and uh, I know that you're in the same boat. So I wanted to bring a, a panelist of people that really um, themselves are in a, a similar situation. So uh, uh, everybody here has their expertise that they're bringing to the table. And I'm going to let our panelists just run through and quickly introduce themselves. And while that happens, I know that some of our panelists can't turn your videos on. I'm going to fix that right now. Uh, Mimi, I'm sure you're in attendees. I'll get you on as a panelist. Uh, I'll just let you go. I'll, I'll call out who's going to go. Ariana, you're going to be first. Heather, you'll be second. Uh, Mike, you'll be next. And then Mariana. And then I'll give you the rest. Uh, just a quick 30 second intro. Who are you? And, uh, and why are you a panelist today? 
All right. Hey, everyone. Glad to be here. I am Ariana Sylvester, and uh, I am a entrepreneur. I have three businesses with my husband, Tom. Uh, we have two brick and mortars, and we run an online business helping entrepreneurs. And I'm here today because we also have two kids. And while our situation is similar to Moshe, we have been working from home um, for years together on these three businesses. Now we are trying to do so with two kids who are normally at at school every day. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to have this discussion. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Heather Ostroff. My husband and I own a law firm here in Orlando, Florida. And we have a two-year-old son who, from the day that he was born, we didn't do daycare. We've been trading off, working from home, and having our son with us. Um, and so this is that experience on steroids because we normally have family who can help and stuff, but, but we've been, we've been basically in this um, situation for two years now. Hi, I am Mike Whalen. I am an author. I wrote a book called lawyer forward, finding your place in the future of law. And it's to summarize it. It's about turning self-acceptance into a business model. And this is a time when you have kids at home, that accepting yourself is super hard because we're all bad at doing school at home. And so it's, I, we're, we're sort of talking about building a business around that. I have four kids. Uh, they range from 13 to 18 and we have homeschooled them for most of their lives. So. Hi everyone. My name is Mariana Ruiz. I'm a certified business coach and consultant, and I help coaches to become thriving CEOs. Uh, my background is in healthcare. We talked a little bit in the pre section. Uh, I worked in brain surgery and then ended up moving into hospital administration. And just when I was asked to run three hospitals, my daughter was born, uh, a preemie 28 weeks. And I also had a 16 month old. So I've been running my business that, that was initially a side hustle online, <laughs> basically with two kids under two uh, until now. Now they're like five and four. Um, and so that I've done that for five years. It's been interesting uh, to say the least, um, especially with them being so little. Uh, we've always kind of moved around. So we weren't, we haven't really been around family during this entire time as well. So I can definitely speak more to that as well. Awesome. We're going to go to Serena and then Guy. Hi, everyone. I'm Serena Ryan. Uh, my husband and I also are entrepreneurs that both work from home. Uh, my specific business that I'm really passionate about is the Confident Homeschooler, helping parents get started homeschooling. Um, and so obviously we homeschool. We have now an eight-year-old and a five-year-old, uh, but they've been home with us since they were two and a baby. And we've worked from home pretty much the entire time. So that's kind of our angle is we're, we've been currently doing the homeschool work from home. And honestly, it's really, this hasn't affected us that much, but it's nice that I'm able to help others through this. And I'm Guy Sakalakis. I'm here in Chicago and I have a three-year-old daughter and a 17 month old son. Uh, we are typically a remote first business, uh, but now we're remote first with toddler coworkers and my wife uh, who typically works from an office is working from home. And so we are navigating this exciting time. Awesome. So folks, as you can tell, I've uh, somehow managed to amass a, a team of experts in this field, uh, people who uh, are being thrown into this like you and figuring it out, but also people who have been doing this for a long time. Uh, even Serena, who's uh, teaching other people how to homeschool. Obviously, she's got some things figured out and, and is going to have some tips for you. Uh, and I'm really excited for what we're about to embark in. This would not be possible. Uh, this live stream, the series of live streams we're doing would not be possible if not for the sponsors who have financially backed it and allowed us to spend money on the promotion, to uh, spend the time and resources to put everybody together and to really make this uh, as valuable as it is. So I'm going to take a moment to talk about our sponsors. I'm going to ask you to please check them out. Um, 
they're they're in there they did the sponsorship to help you they did it to uh be able to bring this content to you uh they uh voted and their, their vote of confidence in me to be able to put this together but they but the vote of confidence is really in you and you and and your success so when i share whatever they're promoting if you can just go and check it out that would be amazing uh it, if it's not for you that's fine too uh but definitely give it a spin so uh, first up, Smith AI. Smith AI is, uh, and their website is smith.ai. Uh, they are your go-to virtual reception company uh, for, now they, they um, this live stream is for, is for law firms, but because of our eclectic panel, there are going to be people on Facebook watching this that are not law firms. Smith AI does outside of the, of the legal business too. So if you have a need for a virtual reception service, uh, pay attention because they are the go-to leader in the industry. They will install a chatbot on your website. They will manage that chatbot. They will answer your phones. They will integrate with your CRM software and they will uh, put leads in. They will, they will actually um, handle first line defense for you if it's customer service calls. And they will also make outbound calls for you. So they really, uh, uh, and they're all uh, US based. So it's not like you're getting somebody over in, in India. So English speaking, um, fabulous people that are answering your phone and doing these calls for you. Normally, when you sign up with them, you get a free 20 call trial, you get free spam blocking, you get free CRM integration. They're offering a special for you. If you sign up through this live stream, use the code Smith. COVID-19, and Mimi is going to share that with you in the chat. Use the code SmithCOVID19, and with that, you'll get a free first month of the starter plan, which is uh, and an additional 20 calls, which is $140 value. On top of that, they'll also do a white glove free 24-7 AI chatbot setup on your website. So they'll install the chat on your website, They will, uh, and they will... Uh, uh, monitor that for you as part of their service. Uh, and you basically don't have to do anything. You just uh, hand off the reins to them and let them do it for you. That's $150 value. Uh, use the code SmithCOVID19 and take advantage of that. Essentially, you're getting, when you, when you do it, if you look at their, their services and their packaging, you're basically getting two months for free to try them out. And then if you don't like it, there's no contract. You just leave. But if you do like it, you're going to be really, really glad that you did take that leap of faith. The uh, next one is New Law Business Model. New Law Business Model, uh, Alley Katz is um, one of our uh, panelists who's been here on a number of our live streams. And um, she... Um, uh, she runs a company that teaches uh, law firm owners how to uh, either add estate planning or get better with estate planning to be able to uh, bill, uh, bill out three to $5,000 per estate plan. Uh, she also teaches you how to get recurring revenue of 750 to uh, $5,000 a month in, I'm sorry, $3,000 a month in recurring business from business clients. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, if you're interested in getting involved in her world, go to her free Facebook group, Lifestyle Lawyers Club. The Facebook group is Lifestyle Lawyers Club. Join the Facebook group. And when you are in there, you will get, um, just let them know you came through the Law Firm Growth Summit uh, COVID live, live series, and they're going to send you a video and a guide that they created on how to serve virtually. But more importantly, Importantly, you'll get their awesomeness in that group and, uh, and be able to start learning the ropes of how to do these things. Uh, finally, we have uh, GNGF is a marketing company for law firm owners. They only deal with law firms. Uh, Mike, um, Mark Homer has written the book on internet marketing for law firms, and he's offering that book for you for free. All you got to do is go to gngf.com forward slash free dash book, gngf.com forward slash free dash book, and he will, uh, and he will ship that book out to you. Finally, here at Profit With Law, uh, my company, uh, we have a podcast, Profit With Law. If you're not familiar with it, go check it out. It's in every podcast player. Uh, we release a minimum of one episode a week. Sometimes two. Uh, so we, I do a solo episode on Tuesdays. We release guest episodes on Thursdays. And now with these live streams, we've actually been repurposing the live streams as a podcast episode as well. So you'll see a daily podcast show right now. Uh, we're going to go back to that schedule when this is over. Uh, it, it's an awesome show. We're just coming up on our one year anniversary. I think it's today or yesterday. Uh, so uh, and we get a ton of, of really good feedback from it. So check it out. Uh, see if it's for you. 
I've also collaborated with Mark Homer from GNGF and Melanie Leonard from Streamline Legal to create an amazing resource for you. If you're a law firm in the zero to 250K of revenue, annual revenue range, um, you're doing a lot of things yourself and you need a support system for that. We decided to create a membership site for you where we're gonna do a weekly call supporting you on your technology, on your marketing, and on the overall running of your business practice. And that's going to eventually be $150 a month, but we opened it up for the first 30 people at $27 a month. So if you're interested in getting in for the life of the product at $27 a month and getting this awesomeness, our first call is on Monday, uh, you wanna get in now. Uh, more than half of those 30 seats are already taken. Uh, so you want to get in before that price goes up because it will go up. And that's going to be profitwithlaw.com forward slash incubator, profitwithlaw.com forward slash incubator to sign up there. So I'm done with my selling, my spiel, and we can go into the content that you came here for. So thanks for bearing with me through that. Uh, and let's just go right to our panelists. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to uh, start off the conversation with, why we're all here, and then we're gonna to go to questions from our audience. So audience, if, um, if you have questions at the bottom of your Zoom screen or on your phone, uh, there is a Q&A button. That is the appropriate place to post a question. When you have a question, just post it into the Q&A section, and then we'll try to get to as many of those questions as we can. If you're willing to come on live to ask your question, audio or video, at the end of the question, let us know, willing to come on live so that we know to bring you on as a live participant. And then we can have a two-way dialogue about what it is that, that your question is. Uh, so right now, I just wanna know from our panelists, share one top tip that you have, uh, and whoever goes last is gonna have the hardest part of this job, but share one top tip that you have to share uh, as far as what you can do to make working from home something that is workable, that makes you productive, and at the same time doesn't, doesn't you know, sacrifice your time with the kids or, or, or make the kids crazy in, in the process. Uh, and I'm gonna go to Heather, you're gonna be first, and Mike, I'll, I'm gonna go to you next. Well, I think that, um, especially in the, in the legal industry, most attorneys are kind of type A personalities and want to have their hands in everything. So I tell them first, you need to triage. So find the most important things to get done and, and work on getting those done because you know that your time is going to be limited. And two is to delegate what you can. Um, if I'm not crazy about the way that my secretary words things or whatever, now is not the time to be concerned about that um, because I know that at any moment I could have my toddler come in screaming about something. So if they can do it 90% as good as me, it's going to happen um, from, from their workstation and not from mine. Yeah, I would tell you to not feel pressured to do school at home if you are doing homeschooling because those are professionals. It's all they do. They're trained for this. You are not, uh, and it's okay. <laughs> at home, you get to be a parent. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to share a resource here. Uh, it's a book called Thomas Jefferson Education, and basically what he he argues is that if you're at home, the idea is to model education, which is a self-driven activity. It's not a task-driven activity. And so model reading, have conversations with them. When my kids were younger, they would go watch Game Theory, which is a bunch of YouTube videos about video games and conspiracy theories and math. And we would just talk about them at the end of the day. And, and that talking and having conversations, we're all trained in the Socratic method if we're lawyers. Um, you know, just having conversations at the end of the day is the most educational experience uh, that your kids will have during the day. So don't try to be a school teacher. Just be a really active and involved parent. You'll be fine. I love that. I wish my wife was watching this right now. Um, so <laughs> we'll go over to Serena next and then uh, Mariana after that. Well, I can tell Michael is a fellow homeschooler because that's exactly my thought process um, is, so I don't want to repeat him, but I, I do want to reiterate that what he just said is gold uh, because as a homeschooler, I'm getting those questions of like, how do I homeschool? And it's like exactly what Michael said. So please take that pressure off yourself and realize that you are a parent at home and enjoy that time together. And I guess we are definitely leaning more unschooling. So what Michael said about like conversations being like our children learn so much just from that one-on-one -on -one time. So 
for us managing running two different businesses with the kids at home, I guess my big advice would be go a hundred percent, no matter what you're doing, give it a hundred percent. So like if we try to do work next to the kids, it's a disaster and we just get frustrated. So like we let the kids know, we set expectations of like mommy and daddy have this call for an hour, but then when we're done the call, we're going to give you a hundred percent of our time. Our phones won't be near us. So that's just like our advice is having that conversation with your kids. And it is tough. Like I remember now having toddlers that you're all bringing that back. And I'm like, Ooh, that was tough because you really, it's harder to have that conversation of like expectations and boundaries with a two-year-old. There is, there is, there's no conversation of that. So, uh, but yeah, just giving your kids a hundred percent and then giving, trying to give work a hundred percent and trying to kind of set that expectation in the morning for your kids. It's awesome. Love that, Serena. Mariana, you're up. Okay. So for me, it's a little bit more of a productivity thing. So like I do a big three to-do list, kind of like what Heller was talking about, right? Like prioritizing, what are the three things? And what I do is I do, I schedule it out so that it, I have 10 minutes or so of bonding time with the children. So like emotional connection, bonding time, whether that be the conversation, the like cuddle, it could be like we did a tutu ya song, which is really fun for toddlers. <laughs> we want to go through that. Uh, but we did that before we bonded. We did like family huddle. And then I go into my task and that top, you know, the top task. And then afterwards I sandwich it with what Serena said. And that has helped so much. I mean, especially because my children are so little when they were even smaller, it was, I mean, you know, the, it's a different demand, but it's a similar thing. And you have to be weary of, or careful with what is their capability of attention span, right? A, a 18 month old, it's going to be like a 20 minute window is what you're going to get. All right. I'm, my window's over. I got to be honest. We're just real life folks. All right. Guy, you're up then Ariana. So, um, you know, we're kind of navigating this new world right now, but I'm, I'm going to give a tactical thing that we've found to be really effective so far. And I think some of the other panelists have already alluded to this is chunking the time out. So I'm a big fan of like scheduling deep work time. And so in the same in similar context is you've got to be intentional about I'm working, I've got, I'm doing this, I'm working, it's on my calendar. We live and die by uh, Google suite calendars. We have a, I have work calendars and personal calendars, and uh, we use Calendly uh, for scheduling. So what happens for us is, is that if I've got a chunk of daddy time on my calendar, Calendly knows don't schedule anything for work during that time. And so that's been hugely important because, you know, work still goes on and, and uh, people want to schedule time with me. And so if they don't, if I'm not working my family calendar somehow with my work calendar and with the scheduling, things fall apart pretty quickly. Um, but I would also just reiterate the uh, setting boundaries, having dedicated work areas, talking to your kids, you know, talking to your uh, uh, spouse um, or partner about uh, what times are going to work for them. And then we have a nightly <laughs> debrief for preparing for the next day. So we make sure everything's syncing up and running smoothly as it possibly can for the next day. Because obviously, uh, you know, Things scheduling is dynamic, and so you, it, we check in once a day to make sure that we're we don't have any major conflicts. Awesome, Guy, love that. Uh, Ariana, you're up. Yeah, so um, our kids are eight and four, and uh, like I mentioned in the intro, they are both at school all day normally. So I think for for me and and for Tom, one of the biggest things that we've had to do with this crisis is really hit the reset button on expectations because we went from having a full day of focused time to know that that was our work time in the middle of the day. And we had family time in the mornings and then afternoons and evenings to all of a sudden, everything has been smushed together. There is not as much clean lines between which time is dedicated to what. And I think the biggest thing is our kids are emotionally adjusting to this just as much as we are. They lost their routines. They lost their friends. They don't get to see their friends anymore. They love their teachers. So it's really, really been about resetting those expectations. And like um, Michael and Sarita both said, 
I am not trying to become a homeschooler. So we tried to do like the whole, let's put a schedule together. And the kids thought it was fun. And then that schedule lasted like two days. And we're like, yeah, I don't think we're going to try and like go line by line and really take the schedule at heart. It was more of let's set guidelines around what's okay, what's not okay. For us, what's not okay is sitting and watching YouTube all day. So let's talk about screen time and let's talk about the other things that we have to do and using your imaginations and finding fun things that are also educational. So it's really been like, okay, I had to reset my expectations, my OCD control, like everyone needs to do these things and say, okay, they're old enough to keep themselves busy and we are going to kind of just flow throughout the day. If we have a busier day, talk that through in the morning and say, hey, listen, everybody, today is a busier day for mom and dad. So we're going to need you to step up and be responsible and find things for yourselves to do. And that doesn't say that you can't come in and get a hug or you can't come in and ask for help if you need it. But, you know, we're getting to this point where everyone has to take responsibility for themselves and we have to learn to communicate with each other. And we have to learn when it's time to take some space from each other because we are all squished here in this house all day, every day. And it's going to start to get on each other's nerves. So that's been the biggest for us, I think, is the expectations. Awesome. Love that. Uh, we're going to go to Molly in just a moment. But before we do, uh, I just want to remind everybody that uh, this is an interactive uh, panel, and if we don't have questions from you, we certainly can create an hour of content for you, but it might not help you with what you need help with. So please don't be bashful. Don't be afraid to ask. Uh, if you want to remain anonymous, just say anonymous in there, and I'll keep, I'll, I'll, I won't mention your name. We can ask the question, but definitely hit that Q&A button, ask the questions that you have, uh, and make sure that you post that in there so that we can get that answered for you. Um, Molly, we're going to go to you, but we missed your intro. So just take a, a quick moment to introduce yourself to uh, our audience today and then uh, let us know your, uh, your top tip for working from home with kids. Yes, thank you. Hi, I'm Molly McGrath and I am founder of Hiring and Empowering Solutions and we have been supporting attorneys with all of their staffing leadership and training needs uh, since 2000, 1997, so about 20 plus years. Um, I love your tip, Ariana. Thank you so much for that. I've been working from home for 20 years now. Um, I finally went and got an office two years ago because my kids are now 18 and 15, but since they were babies and I love that I, my challenge right now is getting them to get off of the electronics and actually engage with me and instead of bothering me. And that's a new, new for me right now. So actually I'm telling them I need one hour of your time in the morning for exercising, for knowing what's on your schedule, and then I'll leave you alone until the end of the day. So that's been really helpful in a new refreshing shift for, for working with, uh, uh, teenagers. So as I said, my kids have been little and I could sit down with them and talk to them about a schedule and mommy needs to work and I'm going to be on a video conference. Don't bother me. They're 18 right now and they still bother me. And, and inevitably when you go, you tell them you have a high priority activity, they'll come in. So I have taught my kids from an early age. I've given them a pad of um, fun color sticky notes and they will always, always come in, but I've taught them and trained them to write down their thought and what is so critical and crucial to interrupt me and bring me this sticky note. I love it because in my office now, I still have sticky notes from my son saying like, can we get a dog? And that no matter what, they would come in with all these just like crucial convert, like questions they had when you're live on video or what have you. And so that's helped me a lot. That's a tip I would say, because they're going to want your attention, especially when you tell them that you're unavailable. So give them a creative way to, to do a thought download. And it, it, like I said, even now my 18 year olds will hand me at least 10 sticky notes a day. And so it's really fun to at least allow them to get their, their important thoughts. Almost like dealing with a quick start or an entrepreneur, like I have this million dollar idea. I have to get it out right now. So if you can train them to do that and then they can at least do their thought download is number one. And number two, I would say for me, I'm really, really creative in the morning and that's my time. So find your peak performance time and do your crucial, crucial activities like everyone else has said there. So whether it's recording a podcast, writing a blog, reviewing content for you know my book or whatever it is where I really need to be present 
and um, need that sacred time, I'd say find your top performing activities and find what your peak performance time is and do it first and foremost before distractions start hitting you. Molly, I love that. And I love the writing it on the post-it notes. I'm bringing it in. I'm not at that stage yet with my four-year-old and two-year-old because I won't be able to make out what they wrote, but uh, <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll get there eventually. I'm going to keep that in mind uh, for, for the future, for sure. Uh, I'm going to share my tip and what's working for us in just a moment, but I just want to let everyone know if you're watching this live uh, on Facebook or on the replay that, uh, that we send out on Facebook, uh, you might want to register for these live streams because we have a whole, whole other week of live streams coming. Our topics next week are tools and technology for law firm survival, managing a cash crunch, getting new clients today, projects you've always wanted to get to, and staying healthy and performing self-care. Uh, if any of these sound like something that might be of interest to you, go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash COVID, profitwithlaw.com forward slash COVID, and register so that you get well, the Zoom links, you can attend on, on the Zoom call instead of being out on Facebook land where we're not monitoring the chat activity and you can ask your questions. Uh, and you'll also get email reminders about the call and what time it is and when we're going live. So uh, definitely go and register. Now, what I want to share with you is uh, we had on day one, so on Monday last week, we started um, social distancing and staying home on Saturday. And um, on Monday, the kids were bonkers. Like it was, it was out of control. And we realized very quickly that uh, unlike Ariana, who found that scheduling did not work for her, that we needed to create a schedule for our kids. Um, and the first thing is that it, that, that that brings to, to mind is look, everybody's kids are different. So take these ideas, try them. If it doesn't work for your kids, you're not doing anything wrong. Just try something else and see what works. But I'm going to share with you, I think this will be helpful for you. Um, we have this daily kids schedule that we create. So my wife and I collaborate at night. We look at each other's schedules. And if you look, you'll see in parentheses, there's D's and M's for daddy and mommy. So we know which one of us is responsible for that time slot. So we're using the schedule ourselves as well. And the kids now have the schedule so they know what's next. And, and I had my assistant make this with the icons and make it pretty. You can do it on a spreadsheet. It doesn't matter. Um, the fact is, is that they have these schedules. We try to keep it 15 to 30 minute blocks, depending on the activity, because anything more than that, they're not going to, they're not going to stay involved. Um, and now I know, like this morning I was in, I was in charge for breakfast and, and getting them dressed because I didn't have anything going on. Jamie was able to get some work done while I did that. And then I had this mo a morning um, sales call and then I have this live stream. So she took over and then I'm going to have a coaching call. And then in the afternoon I'm up again and she's able to work and get her work done. And that's how we're able to coordinate between each other and, and, make, and make this work. Now, we did find that after the first couple of days, the schedule was a novelty and the kids followed the schedule. Everything went fine. After a couple of days, my son started getting upset. He doesn't want to have a schedule. So now we added a token board to the schedule. So every time that we complete an activity on the schedule, they get a token and every four tokens, they get something out of the magic box, which is a box of candy. Um, and, 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 you know, and that's what we're doing and that's working right now. Uh, so I think that you need to be willing to, to pivot, to change, to, to alternate what you're doing. Um, but I also think that uh, communication between spouses, like he said, you know, we have this meeting every night. We look at each other's schedules. I tell her what I have blocked in. She's more flexible because she can do her work whatever at any time it just does she just needs a certain amount of time to get her work done um so we you know i tell her what i have already on the calendar and those are the times that i'm working and the rest of the time uh, i'm i'm taking care of the kids and she's working um and then you can do what heather's doing and just have your kid with you while you're working um and and problem solved so uh, that's, that's basically uh, what I had to share and really goes along what a lot of you have already been saying. So I'm going to bring um, Michelle Smith 
Mimi, can you ask Michelle Smith if she is willing to go live? In the meantime, Melissa Pierce is willing to go live. So I'm going to go to Melissa Pierce. Um, and Melissa, I'm going to do, let's see. Let's find you. Let me promote you to a panelist. We'll bring you live. I'm assuming you want to go on video. Uh, and I'll let you ask your question to us or share what, what it is that you want to share. Let me do, make you a co-host. You could turn your video on now and unmute yourself and you got the floor. Hi everyone. These are really great tips. I am a family law attorney and you know fortunately for me I should say my kids are now grown and out of the house. The youngest is 22 but I have lots of clients who are now trying to work from home with young kids at home and they don't know what to do. So what are some good resources that I could direct them at? And most of these you know our single parents are telling them to trade off with the spouse really won't work with them. So what are your tips to help them manage this time frame? Yeah. So um, panelists, what we're going to do is, is just open your mic and hopefully we're not stepping on each other and, and, and take the floor and, and share uh, and share what you can. Uh, while I'm already talking, I'll just say that what we've been doing is a few different things. Um, number one, we've been scheduling Zoom chats with our kids' friends. Um, now, they're very interesting because they want it, but at the same time, if we do it every day, then they're like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. So we've been doing it like uh, every couple or, or two or three days. Uh, so we'll leave a gap in between and they each get a Zoom call with their friends and we just coordinate with other parents and, and you know, by text message to figure out a time that works. Um, and then we've been the one organizing the Zoom call, but somebody needs to just take charge of that to create the link. And then the kids get to see each other. And uh, what my wife has been doing on the Zoom call is making it more of a structured call. So telling the other parents, look, if, you know, we're going to take turns and everyone else mute yourself. So this way they can hear, the, hear, hear your child. And they've been, you know, one day they were sh showing off a toy that they had. Um, <laughs> another day they were talking about what they were doing. So they had a, you, you had to actually create structure around the call to make sure that they, that it was productive for them. Uh, I guess it depends on the age. Um, this is my four-year-old and my two-year-old. Um, if your kids are older, you know, if the kids you're talking about are older, then they probably need less structure and they could just have a chat. So just create a, a way for them to connect with their friends is one thing that we're doing. The other thing is just finding other resources, which you just asked, like, what are the resources? Uh, Cincinnati Zoo has a live stream every day at three o'clock. Uh, that my kids have been loving and every so every day they're they're they go live with another animal in the zoo and they talk all about the animal and they and uh, and you get to watch it watch them interact with it um, and learn about the animal my kids have been loving that and the nice thing is it's a Facebook live so if three o'clock doesn't work for you it's there for you to watch later you can go to a, the one from yesterday um, so you can really do it anytime uh, but if it's lot, you know, when it's live, you can post questions. However, there's usually 30, 40,000 people on that live stream. So they're probably not really going to see your question anyway. Uh, so it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but look for resources like that. And the best place to find them is like in mommy groups. So um, maybe encourage your client to join some of these parenting groups that are out there because people are posting these things in there. And there's a ton of of things that they can that they can do. Uh, I'm going to turn the mic over to the panelists and, and let them share what they've been finding and what's been working for them. So um, I have done family law in the past and I understand that there's a lot of issues going on especially right now with you know parents trying to connect with their kids when they're not the parent who's uh, quarantining with them and so one app that I found that's really really useful for helping the um, parent who's not with the children to connect is it's called caribou c-a-r-i-b-u and it allows parents grandparents whomever to read books with the children um, play games with them draw pictures and color with them um, through the app and so that way it's almost working as a tele babysitting tool and um, the non-custodial parent has an opportunity to continue to connect with the child or you can have grandparents, friends, whomever, um, you know, work with them through the app, which is a great way to connect and keep the child uh, occupied while you are trying to get some work done. 
I would say one thing I would offer up is maybe you can lock arms with some of your power partners that you have and strategic alliances and, and offering like a Zoom class of some sort. Um, I don't know, maybe if it's a therapist or just other people that you have that are referral sources and offer an educational X, Y, or Z for your clients um, is number one. That That has been going very, very well for many of my attorney clients. And number two, I would say is take some of these tips that you got from us today, make a list of them, and you can even make a video. I love Moshe's one about the Cincinnati Zoo. Find things that are going on in your industry and send them a link and say, hey, guys, just want to let you know about this. A great way to entertain your kids. There's no shortage of content out there. So just repurpose it and constantly offer them a tip. They'll be forever grateful for that. So and. And then also taking these tips and you can make a video or write a blog or whatever is easiest for you and post it through your social channels of different tips that we all shared today. And there's no shortage of probably weeks of content that you can use. Yeah, I really like these tips. I love that idea, Molly, of uh, being the one to compile all these resources and and share it with them. And I think that's what your question was, Melissa, but taking it to the next level of actually creating a piece of content out of it so that they have a place to go back and find it again instead of sharing it in in a phone call. I love that. Uh, Anybody else want to chime in? Yeah. Um, So, sorry, I had to leave for a second. But um, yes, I am also a single mom. And uh, even when we were married, my husband was traveling a lot. So that has been my experience, right? Like just juggling it all mostly by myself. And for me, one of the things that really worked well is waking up prior to the children getting up so that I had some time like to just sit in silence by myself. You know, like if you're this only person taking care of the children, you don't have that time for yourself. So that was key. I wake up at 4.30. It's a little excessive, but my children sometimes get up at six. So I want to make sure I get ahead of them. And um, the other, some resources that I found, um, Scholastic is giving away some free lessons right now um, for homeschooling. I mean, it is more schooly, so it depends on what, you know, what they feel comfortable doing. It's literally like they're like 10 minute little book uh, books that they're reading and then they have a corresponding activity or I will make one. So I usually, whatever they do, then I'll do something that's action oriented with it. Um, and then uh, I actually have a client uh, who runs Preschool Planet, which is uh, a uh, membership site that helps teachers to plan out their uh, lesson plan. So not, you know, it's not really relevant to your clients exactly, but she is giving away some free resources for parents because she has this like plethora of information for preschoolers and how to really um, handle them in the classroom. So she's modified some of those things to make it possible to do some stuff with your uh, preschoolers. I think one thing too, for me that I've kind of experienced, you know, I went in with a lot of like, I don't want to, I want to try to minimize interruptions and everything. And it turns out like people understand. I mean, there's so many times where I was on calls where I'm like, I found myself being like, I'm so sorry. And you know, setting expectation that like my toddler's gonna be running through here any second. And they're like, I'm so glad you said that because so is mine. And so, you know, I, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a challenge for a lot of people. And I think the nice thing is, is that in in certain contexts, not this is a blanket statement. It's not gonna work for everybody. You know, they're, uh, tough situations too, but, um, you know, having those conversations and having, you know, don't be, don't be afraid to say, you know, look, I'm working from home. I've got my toddler, uh, because you might be surprised how people respond to it. In fact, I I came in with a lot of like anxiety in some calls about it. And people were like, we actually prefer when your toddler is sitting on your lap when we talk to you. And I was like, Oh, good. There we go. See? Uh, so anyway, I think that's just another thing that just kind of alleviates some of the anxiety about that. Uh, like I said, it's not, cure all for everything, but um, don't be afraid to, to let those toddlers in. That's a really good tip for, you know, the parents who are trying to work from home and think they have to shuttle their kids out of the room. Mariana, I love it that your kids have poked in and out in, in the video there because, you know, it makes us all look human. I mean, for me, I've got my fur babies who will jump up in my lap during some Zoom calls with clients. And I tell them, like, look, I've got my dogs popping in, so don't be, you know, I'm not not paying attention to you. I'm trying to figure out what they need. 
this is the time when you figure out who your jerk clients are. Because if they get mad about your toddler, sorry, you don't want that client anyway. All right. Um, anybody else want to add anything to Melissa? All right, Melissa, did we adequately answer your question? Oh, yes. I've got a long list of resources that I'm actually only going to turn into a blog video and share it with my clients on um, my firm's Facebook because I'm getting inundated with questions of how, how do I do this? So thank you all for all these tips. Awesome. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to Michelle Smith. I'm bringing her on as a panelist right now. And Michelle, in just a moment, you'll be able to now you should be able to turn on your video and unmute your microphone. Um, and uh, Melissa, I'm going to send you back into the crowd. Uh, so when you're ready, Michelle, just go ahead with your question. Hi, thanks so much for putting this together, first off. Um, secondly, I think a lot of people have started answering my question. It, it goes back to what Molly was saying earlier, you know, inevitably when you're on these calls is when your kids need something. Um, and it could be, can we get a dog? It could be, are we gonna go on a vacation? Um, and those questions can become very persistent when you're in the middle of the conversation. And how do you guys best address that with your clients and with your kids. I know that giving them a heads up that, hey, I'm home and I have my kids with me. And right now people are definitely more understanding about that, um, considering we're all on, or many of us are already on uh, shelter in place orders. But how do you guys walk through that with your clients, with your customers and with your kids in the middle of the moment? Mm, I love that question. I'll just share with you what has worked for me. So I've had that upfront conversation with the clients. And I think to Michael's point, if they get very incensed about it, then they're not your ideal client. I, I wholeheartedly believe with that. But what has worked really well for me is that when my kids come in, I actually invite them to come to the camera and I introduce them and show my kid, my clients that I have kids. And I can tell you that I've done this for 20 years it stops it immediately. They stop coming in because they don't want to be on camera and they don't want to be put on this spot. So it works like a charm. Once at least that's worked for me where I'm like, oh, come in, please. And I'll say, what's one tip you'd like to give them about blah, blah, blah. And they freeze and then they run, scurry away and I never see them again. Yeah, that's worked really well. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say, as an attorney, it's a little bit harder because we, ha we have to be concerned about attorney-client confidentiality. And so, um, you know, when my child's a newborn, I'm not as worried about him hearing or passing on client secrets. But as they get older, I have to make sure that I'm scheduling sensitive phone calls during nap time or before or after, you know, they, they, go, they wake up. And, um, and that makes it a lot more complicated in my industry to make sure that we're protecting our clients' confidentiality. You got to build the toddler data breach into your engagement letter. <laughs> Just tell them that's a risk of the business. I have, I have, done, many, <laughs> I have done many client consultations with my son sitting on my lap, in the room, watching YouTube or whatever. And, and for the most part, my clients love it. And if they don't love it, then they're not the right client. But, you know, I do have to be concerned going forward that as they get older and they're able to understand what people are saying to make sure that I'm protecting my clients. Well, and as a family lawyer, it's, I, it, most of my consultations would have had to have the E next to it, you know, the explicit warning, the content warning <laughs> for my kids. So I, for their sake, I don't want them in there either. Well, that actually brings up an interesting question. I mean, if we're talking about confidentiality issues, once your children are present Yes, you have to worry about them sharing the information, but just the fact that they're present, I think we need to start thinking about whether that's actually breached that confidentiality completely anyways. So I, I think it's interesting to think about that point, which I hadn't um, until you just brought it up, that it's not just an issue of how you deal with the client, but how you deal with the legal issues surrounding that. I also, I also think it's important for attorneys like fam uh, family attorneys to be cognizant if their clients are working from home and have their children at home you don't want to have conversations about time sharing or custody while the children are present and you need to make sure with your clients that they're not around also because that that's a direct violation of many court orders but also potentially damaging for you know the, the family structure as well 
Um, I can just say too, Michelle, um, for us now that our kids are eight and six, we have the Facebook Messenger app on their phones. Um, we call them their phones, but they're, they don't actually have service, but they have internet. So they'll Facebook message us and like, we'll get a little pop up if it's like, it's usually, you know, silly things like I have to poop or <laughs> I need a sandwich and it's like, I'm hungry and it's like, oh my goodness. But there have been times like yesterday, they just barge in and like sometimes they'll crawl in and then we do the same thing Molly said, like we introduce them. And unfortunately my older one's the opposite. Like he's a ham, he's like a stage. And so he will like start doing magic tricks and telling jokes. So we kind of have to like, we just speak to them in the moment. We're like, okay, Sandra and Teddy, like mommy and daddy have 20 more minutes. As soon as we're done this call, we're gonna be giving you 100% attention. And then they're like, okay, okay. And they leave and, so yeah, in that moment, just like having a little sidebar conversation and telling them the expectation, that for us has really worked. Uh, but also to realize like we've been doing this for years, they've grown up being used to this. And for the parents that are being thrown into this, this is not normal for you or your children. So just have grace. And, and fortunately, we're not, we're not lawyers. So our clients all know we homeschool. And so they expect it because we have the same philosophy. Like if you don't like it, we're not your coach because our kids are here all the time. You have to be used to that. So um, I definitely think the advice from the lawyers is really helpful too, assuming that most people um, have law firms and are lawyers. Okay. But sometimes the, I have to poop message is the most important, <laughs> shut it down, get out of there now kind of message. Yeah. That's so context tight. people con <laughs> poop context matters. Yeah, you don't know where the poop's happening. and Exactly. <laughs> need to, yeah, there have been a few moments where it was like, oh, it wasn't in the toilet? Oh, okay, we got to go. We got to shut this down. I just wanted to hop in and talk. Obviously, my kids are eight and four, so we've kind of passed out of the toddler stage a little bit. But one of the things that really helped us when our son was younger was um, having that distraction ready. So... Obviously, they come in and again, my son, the younger one is, is like Serena's where he sees the microphone and the people and he starts singing songs very loudly. And so you kind of have to like quick in the moment, hey, you can say hi quickly and then look at this cool thing that I have in here and I found something for you to do that's very special and it's only for you. So just kind of like having the, those tricks up your sleeves for the little ones and like pulling out a new toy or something they haven't seen for a while. Maybe you need to start hoarding some things and keeping them in a special drawer in your desk so that you can pretend it's brand new and they've never seen it before. Giving them something to just immediately in the moment distract them out of like having to be up in your business and they can sit quietly and play with the new thing or draw or color, whatever that is. Um, that was something that was massively helpful for us and just kind of getting him out of the direct vicinity and being able to wrap up the call. And then you could say, okay, now I have time for you. Let's talk about what you need and, and move on with your day. Um, I'd also like to add to like, um, cause we're, most lawyers are probably very type A, right? I'm like right there with you guys on this, right? Type A personality. And what tends to happen is what, um, do you pronounce your name G or Guy? Uh, Guy, like the, uh, like, like the, the butter. Butter, yeah. Yes. Yes. And you kind of alluded to this and I caught myself when you said it was, you know, I came back and I'm like, I'm so sorry, right? And And it's that internal dialogue that we go through, right? And I think that part, is the part, not only are we wasting so much time with it, but are, how much of that can we actually control, right? And so like just getting to the fact that everyone's on this uh, call is probably going through something similar. Can we just calm down the part that like adds shame and guilt to what's happening and just accept that this is what it is, right? Like I think that piece is is the part that I have been working through in this time because it's been harder than it has been before. Cause like I said, we're now I'm a single mom, which before I had some help. Right. So it's really just that like not having to have that internal dialogue and catching myself as soon as possible. And, you know, really just everyone's in the same boat. Like we're all in this together, which is actually so much better than it could be. Right. 
when I started my business, I felt like I was alone in an island, right? Working from home and by myself, and I was the only one going through it. Now it feels like we're all in it, right? So can we accept this is just a circumstance? I love that. I love what everybody has shared. Uh, I, I'd like to add just a few thoughts myself. Um, first of all, uh, be really, really careful about your immediate reaction when your kid comes into the room um, because somebody else is watching your behavior. So um, there, you know, there's, there's been viral videos online where a newscaster, uh, you know, had his kid come into the, come into the room and you see how, you know, how he tried to just completely ignore the kid and, and keep going. Um, that may not be the best tactic and, and, and certainly getting mad at your kid or, or reacting in a way that, that just sends off the wrong vibes can, can really put a bad taste in the other person's mouth. So um, you want to make sure that, that of, of, you know, you're in your best form as far as how you react. Uh, the next thing that I would th that I would suggest is that you assess the situation based on what it sounds like is happening, because sometimes being able to give your child 30 seconds is going to solve the problem for 30 minutes. And sometimes it's not like it really depends on what mode they're in. So I think that if it's a 30 second thing, then you just say, hey, can you hold on a second? I, I, I just I have an interruption. I, I'll be right back. And if you're on a Zoom call, just mute, turn off the camera and then spend the 30 seconds, 60 seconds with your child and talk to them and talk them off the ledge and hey, I'm gonna give you something to do, come back and now you're back in business. Um, if it's one of those where they're gonna keep bothering you, then you gotta find a way to maybe bring them on the camera. Maybe like I have a couch in my office and my son came in, daddy, I'm tired. So I said, okay, lay down on the couch, no problem. So he laid down here and then he starts telling me, daddy, you be quiet. You're keeping me awake. So, so then I was like, all right, go to the couch outside. So he left and he went to the couch outside. So I think it's, you know, just assessing the situation and, and, and rolling with the punches and just being able to think on your feet. But I love um, a lot of the ideas that were thrown around. Guy having a workstation in his, uh, in his office for his son. Um, uh, uh, people talking about having uh, activities already set up uh, outside and and all of those ideas are are great ideas. So, um, uh, what was it, Michelle? That was asking that question. Michelle, did we uh, appropriately answer your question? Is, do you, do you have any follow up questions on that? I think she she might have she might have had to mute herself. Sorry, guys, I am in the process of decontaminating my groceries. So yes, you did a great job answering my question. Um, and thank you. It, it helps a lot. And people are much more understanding these days, but having other people's ideas on how to work with my kids through the process is really helpful. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. All right, folks, I'm going to go over to one of our panelists, to Mike. Mike is going to um, ask us our final question for the series, uh, for, the, for the, the show today. And then uh, we're going to wrap it up with that discussion and let you uh, go about your business. But before I do that, I just want to take a moment to shout out our sponsors of this live stream. Um, we, we spoke about them at the top of the hour, but for those of you who are just joining us now, uh, I want to just mention them again real quick. So Smith AI is a, your go-to virtual reception service, and they have a special discount code, SmithCOVID19, uh, where you practically get two months of free service, free chatbot AI uh, set up and, and, and installation on your website. And so you definitely want to uh, check them out with that code, take advantage of that. New Law Business Model has a Facebook group called the Lifestyle Lawyers Club, where uh, they're, they're uh, slinging great information for charging uh, three to $5,000 for an estate plan, uh, getting $750 to $3,000 a month of recurring revenue from business clients. If those numbers sound like something that makes sense for you, that you would like to have in your law firm, join their their uh, their Facebook group, uh, Lifestyle Lawyers Club, and just let them know that you came through the Law Firm Growth Summit COVID series, and they're going to send some free stuff to you, a video and, and something else, uh, a guide of some kind to help you with the growth of your firm. Uh, finally, you can get a free book from Mark Homer at GNGF on internet marketing for law, for law firm owners, and uh, you can get that at gngf.com forward slash free dash book. 
Uh, and then Profit with Law, we just launched the incubator for law firms who are in their infancy, zero to 250K annual revenue. You're wearing multiple hats. You need help in marketing. You need help in technology. You need help in running your business. We're here to help you. I've collaborated with Mark Homer from GNGF, with Melanie Leonard from Streamline Legal to create a product for you. And right now, it's normally going to be 150 a month, and it's $27 a month right now to get in. So you, you're just not going to have an opportunity like this ever again. And that's ProfitWithLaw.com forward slash incubator, ProfitWithLaw.com forward slash incubator. Mike, over to you. I'm going to let you uh, introduce our last topic and we'll have a discussion around it and then we will uh, we'll be good to go. Yeah, just a quick question for people. I, I don't want to extend this too far beyond, but maybe the Facebook audience will like it. I, a bunch of friends of mine and we face the same thing. We're in Kansas and ours was the first state to say we're done with school for the rest of the year. Uh, and my two younger kids were in school this year. Um, they wanted that experience. And so they pulled the kids. And what a bunch of schools are doing is panicking, right? Trying to create these education plans that people can do at home and all these online school things. And I'm seeing a lot of frustration. We have a lot of frustration with they're plugging these kids into computers for seven hours a day, uh, doing a really rigorous program. Um, you know, employers, some employers are doing the same thing where you have to check in and, and say over and over what you're doing every hour and you're doing all this reporting. I was wondering what people were doing. Are you, we're, we're just withdrawing our kids uh, from school and going to do homeschool because we don't like that. But for, but for those of you who have, you know, kids that they're getting these school programs, how are you interacting with the schools to make sure that you're doing what they want, but also being responsive to your kids' needs on a day-to-day basis? I, I'll take that one. <laughs> you know, my kids are 15 and 18, and my son's a senior, so not really sure what that's going to look like in regards to graduation, et cetera. But I've been struggling with getting information from them on what is being expected of them, et cetera. So I actually sent an email to um, the counselors last night, and I asked if I could do a Zoom meeting with each one of my kids and their counselor to go through what the expectations are, how much time it should be taking for from, et cetera. I think my recommendation is take it in your own hands to get the get get educated on what's being expected, what is, how it's being assigned, how it's being laid out. Um, because right now, you know, they're just, I'm not certain if what they're telling me is, is accurate. And I just want to know what the expectation is of how much time it should take them each day. Because every time I go in their rooms, they're like, uh, yeah, we're doing homework. And I don't know if it's accurate. So for me, it's causing a lot of anxiety while I'm working and I'm on back-to-back-to-back teleconferences and Zooms. I have no idea if they're doing homework or what have you or what, it, what the expectation is, what the results and, and how the communication is going. So I actually requested a Zoom with each one of their counselors to lay out the plan and know what's, what is expected from input, output, time, energy, et cetera. Awesome, Molly. Thank you for that. I don't know if anybody else has anything to add. Uh, I know that this is uh, for us. My my son uh, Tyler is in. Uh, he's in school, and um, and he's and he's getting special ed. And we're concerned about the fact that his special ed is, is going to run out. We're thinking about keeping him back for um, uh, kindergarten. Uh, you know, keeping him out for another year, and he's not going to have the same opportunity to get the same. Uh, same education. So for us, we're just concerned about all of this missed time that he's that he's having with his various therapists. Um, and, you know, the school's not forthcoming with offering that at home or, you know, uh, you know, virtually. Um, they sent a packet of work. And honestly, he, you know, he's very resistant to that. And, and I don't and, and we're not, you know, to the point of uh, earlier in the conversation, we're not teachers we're not educators we're parents and we have a different experience it's not just it's not not just that we're not we're not trained on how to provide it but our kids are not open to us being the teacher right they, they behave differently with us uh so they're, they're we're we we have a very different experience if we try to do the same thing that their teacher is doing with them um so i don't know it's a really good question i don't know what we're going to do uh there's no point in us withdrawing um, you know, it, uh, from the program because it, you know, if they reopen, if they, you know, if they do, they haven't canceled for the rest of the year, if they do go back and, and it's safe to, to venture out of the home, we're going to send them back. 
Um, but I'm more concerned about how is the district going to handle it and, 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 and make up for this lost time. Uh, but that's, that's our situation by us. Um, yeah, for us, the, the, this teachers were supposed to send something, but we still haven't received anything. Um, there's been some communication of like between the kids, but we haven't received anything. And, and again, I'm just kind of going on my own curriculum as if I were homeschooling. <laughs> Like, just, I mean, especially with my daughter was learning the letters and the numbers and was struggling to remember them. And I noticed her forgetting them again, just after a couple of days. And so it was, you know, she really needed that daily review. So for us, we've just been doing our own curriculum. Yeah, I love that. And I think that ultimately you, you have to figure out what works for you, what works for your family, what works for your kids. Um, all of these things are ideas, just seeds to think about. Uh, but really, you have to make the best decision for you. And, and, um, and there's also resources. I, I didn't come armed with these resources, but because uh, my wife is much more uh, involved in them. But there's definitely Facebook groups around these different things. I know, Serena, you have a Facebook group for homeschooling. Uh, maybe you can share that. Uh, with with everybody here, if if it's still something that that you're that you actively promote, um, but that might be a good resource for people to get into, even if this is a temporary situation uh, to be you know to be involved in. And um, uh, so, if you can if you can let us know what that is, that would be great. Uh, and I don't know if anybody else has anything to share. And Mariana, maybe you can introduce your co-pilot. This is Adrian Hi. and Gabby. Hi guys. Hi. Say hi, where? Hi. <laughs> All right, Serena, over to you. Hey Moshe. Hey everybody. Um yeah, I was I typed um the confident homeschooler. We have a free Facebook group. If people want to come in there, there's plenty of seasoned homeschoolers in there that can offer resources and I I share resources in there. Um and also for other entrepreneurial people homeschooling. My husband and I have um, a free Facebook group for, we call it homeschoolpreneur society. And so there's good conversation in there about like launching your business and doing this stuff. We are talking about that. It's been entrepreneurs homeschooling, but now, you know, if you're temporarily doing that, we'd love to have you there. And you, you should be able to just search homeschoolpreneur society on Facebook and we can have good conversation there. I think we're going to have like a, just a zoom chat to chat with other parents about it too. Cause it is, it is interesting. And like what you guys were saying about the schoolwork, my friend in California, her kindergartner was given like, I guess her, that school district's been prepared for months for this. So they have, she has so much work to do with him, but 95% of it's on, on a computer online. And she's like, I don't want my five-year-old staring at a computer all day, but like they have her do, she has two other younger children and they're having her like make a diagram of an ant with him. And he has to learn all these sight words. And she's like so overwhelmed. Whereas in Delaware, we've, the people have been giving like nothing. I think they've been given like little packets, but it's, they're like, it's kind of a joke. So it's really interesting too, like how every state, every district is just getting different information. And so whether you're getting a lot or a little, give yourself grace. Do know that like uh, Michael said, homeschooling doesn't have to look like school at home. You could do the schoolwork in the evening when the other parent is available to help if you have that support. Um, our kids do better in the afternoon and evening. We let them play all morning because if I try to get two boys to sit and do schoolwork at 9 a.m. And also because that's our creative work time. So like morning is like play time for them, work time for mom and dad. And then after lunch is when we like give them more of our time if, if we can that day. So yeah, just being flexible, giving yourself grace and just, yeah, don't have these high expectations and these really rigid schedules if that stresses you out when you don't accomplish it. I don't want anyone to feel defeated by a schedule that by 11 a.m. it's out the window and they're like, oh, I can't do this, you know. So we do rhythms. We don't do schedules in our home. But for Moshe and his wife, like schedules working great. So like Moshe has said, something different works for every family. So please don't be discouraged if what works for the next family doesn't work for you. Find your new normal and what works, what rhythms work for your family. 
and just love each other. Enjoy this time together. Awesome. I love that. Uh, what I want to do is, is um, I'm just going to one final parting word from any of the panelists that are still here. If you want to share anything that you that you thought you wanted to share, but it just didn't come up yet. Um, we'll just quickly run through that and we'll close this call down. Uh, for me, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to share that uh, you have to know where your place is. So if, if you're, you know, some people are a single parent, you have no choice. It's you. Uh, but if you have a spouse, one of you is probably better at certain things with the kids than, than the other. So try to figure out what that is and, you know, and, and, um, and, and shine where, where, where you, you know, where you shine best, you know? So I know that sitting and doing their, their schoolwork with them, that's just not my, it's not my thing. Like I, I'll, I'll have fun with them. I, I mean, I put set up the bounce house in the living room and we've been doing bounce house together and I'll throw them into the bounce house all day long, but sitting down and, and, and going through letters to try to form words um, is just as painful for me as it is for my son. Uh, but my wife, she'll sit there and, and he'll do it with her and she'll have, and, and she'll encourage him and she'll have the patience for it. So I think you have to re recognize w which activities you're good at and stick to those so that you're not creating your own frustration and you're not creating frustration for your child. Um, that's my, my parting advice and, and piece of wisdom. And we'll just go around. I'll go to uh, Heather. If you have anything to add, uh, just unmute yourself. Sure. So, you know, I think that we should just appreciate the um, amount of free play that our kids get right now. Um, there's so much to be learned from um, allowing them to be creative and to lead the way in, in, in their interests and hobbies. Um, I found that I can put my kid next to a pile of dirt with some trucks and he's happy for an hour. And, and that's okay. And he's learning his pretend play that way and, um, and, and enjoying the outdoors. And, and so I think that we should embrace the fact that our kids now get unlimited recess and, um, and, and really use that to our advantage, especially when we're trying to get work done. Awesome. And uh, Mariana, over to you. Yeah, I think it's, it's really just that giving yourself grace, like letting it, we're all in the same boat. We're all in it with you. And, you know, seeking out those communities for support for yourself, especially if you're a single parent doing this by yourself yeah. or you're in a difficult situation of any kind, really just seeking out Actually, that support for it. yourself and do not it. being so shy to ask for it. Awesome. And Serena, you have anything else to add? Um, just kind of along with what Heather was saying of like, it's okay for your kids to be bored Boredom is a good thing, actually. A lot of creative juices are flowing when they're bored. So I just feel like parents right now feel like they have to entertain their kids 24-7 because they assume, like, in school, they're being engaged 24-7. They're not at school. They're at home. And if it were summer break or Christmas break, would you be stressing yourself out every hour of the day to fill their day? Or would you be okay with a little extra screen time or just some boredom time? So Definitely boredom is not a bad thing and please don't feel like you have to like entertain them every hour of the day. It's, it's pretty much impossible. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and I'm just going to close out with one final thing. And that is that uh, I am so grateful of this gift of time that I have been given with my kids and we are creating memories that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to create. I take for granted the fact that my kids are gone every day during the day and I get to, to do things and, you know, um, to be productive while they're gone. But now that they're here and when I'm in the moment with them, uh, I need to keep reminding myself that this is a blessing and this is an opportunity and I, I, I should be fully present with them during that time. Uh, so if, it, if it's possible for you, I know Mariana of single parents like Mariana, it's a much harder thing for you. When you have two, two spouses in the house, you can, you can play tag and one of you is in, is, is in charge. When you're in charge, 
try to you know keep focused and 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 just recognize the blessing that that you're being presented with and if you're a single parent try to figure out how to create blocks where now i'm going to worry about getting stuff done and i might be successful or i might not but now's a block i'm going to spend with my kids and i'm just going to not think about work during this time and i'm just going to focus on the kids 100 percent. and the kids will feel that they'll recognize that and they'll give you the grace during those other times if you're really doing that so those are my final words uh, guys, we're, we have a whole other week of live streams. Go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash COVID to sign up. And uh, we hope that this was helpful for you, uh, that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much to our panelists for your time. A bunch of you had a drop off. So there's the, the couple that are that are last standing. Uh, I just want to thank you personally for coming and spending your time here. And um, uh, we'll see you out on, on the internet. And uh, uh, good luck with, with, with the time with the kids and with getting stuff done. Um, we're all in this together and, uh, and rooting for you. Take care. Thank you for tuning into the Profit With Law podcast. Your feedback is extremely valuable to us as well as helping us reach more people with this valuable content please leave us a rating and review in your favorite podcast directory. Join us again next time when we are back with even more strategies to profit with law.